is lost due to lack of documentation. Even though sound has traveled far and wide, the knowledge is still lacking. There is no better time to close the following journey, bringing together history and the future, gathering data for appropriate attribution of music credits, answering the most intricate questions about sounds coming out of the continent, all on one platform, introducing the African Music Library. We are not only telling the story of our music, we are bringing robust intelligence, deep insights, and a collaborative community. Join us as we progress with future proof knowledge and the world's most accurate and comprehensive database on African music. Uh, right, thank you very much, uh, uh, for sharing that video. And uh, uh, good day to all of you. Good morning, if it's your morning, afternoon, if it's your afternoon and evening, uh, where, wherever you're joining us from today. We are so happy and excited to, to have you with us today. Uh, today, we're going to be you know, unveiling and announcing the African Music Library. Uh, the African Music Library is essentially you know, um, a project uh, promoted, currently promoted by Just Play. Um, and uh, it's like we have said, it's, it's a repository of African music knowledge and data. So um, it's a product of the work we've been doing at Just Play. Um, Just Play is a music intelligence uh, company, by the way. And uh, when we started out, what we found was that, you know, there currently exists no one repository for data and knowledge about African music. Data is held up in silos in different places when they exist. In most cases, they don't even exist at all. So um, it's been a painstaking uh, uh, effort by the team, thanks to the team that just played, uh, who have developed this data through uh, an iterative process you know, that involves a lot of musical, uh, musicology, software engineers, machine engineers. And today we're sharing that, um, you know, artifacts, some of the artifacts with the world, uh, with everyone. Uh, in the African music space to help, you know, galvanize that community of creators and innovators so that people who come afterwards would have something to uh, start with immediately and even go further than further that we can reach. What we are sharing today with the African Music Library is just um, uh, like a seed. It is the, the it is a very um, a, a small uh, <laughs> seed at, at this moment, but we hope that with collaborators uh, with uh, collaboration with uh, collaborations with everyone in the industry, that we'll be able to nurture this seed and grow it into um, something that becomes you know a huge data exchange for everyone in the industry, be it for royalty settlements, uh, for application development, uh, or just for the curious mind and researchers you should be able to find you know, data that you need for any sort of project that involves African music. So once again, uh, welcome to uh, uh, this um, webinar. And uh, today we're going to be taking you through how the library looks at the moment, how it works, and what our expectations for it. We also have a, a panel that will be discussing um, you know, the uh, importance of data in the, in the music ecosystem. I was also going to be taking you through our internal process. You know, how do we even go about getting this data, or, or you know, analyzing them, or you know, making sure that they they are accurate. Um, so thanks again and welcome, and uh, sit tight uh, as we proceed. Over to you, Nemeka. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for laying the groundwork for the rest of today's event. Uh, before we go ahead, I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the presence of some of our very, very special guests here. Um, right now, we have the president of PIMAN on this uh, call, uh, Mr. Priti Okafor. Uh, don't let the Mr. fool you. That's the, the legend, the superstar, uh, Priti of uh, Junior and Priti fame. If you know, you know. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence. We also have the giant, if you like, the giant of African music, Mr. B. Asika, an AML trustee. Thank you very much, sir, for your presence. We have um, 
German and Nick Lakbo, veteran journalists here. We are very happy to have you. Uh, Mr. James Amota, we see you. Thank you very much. And every other person here, some of you I cannot see. Oh, I think we see, uh, I see uh, Jotam. Uh, Mr. Jotam is the CEO of Capasso South Africa. Thank you very much for honoring us with your presence. And of course, to every other person here, I'm sure you know with the way this uh, app is set up, I can't see everybody. So everyone on this call is definitely very important. So we are very, very happy to have all of us here. Uh, also, I'd like us to note that uh, we can use the chat uh, channel. There's this chat uh, feature to the right of your screen. Uh, we can use that channel to send in messages in the course of this uh, program. You know, whatever you hear uh, that you want to make contributions to, of course, um, African Music Library itself is a collaborative project. So we are always willing to get uh, feedback, comments, contributions, and the like. So as the program goes on, if there's anything you want to say, even if you just to say hello, to say hi, or to make a contribution or ask a question, you know, or give feedback based on something you hear, please use uh, that chat channel. And from time to time, I'll be consulting the channel to see if there's any question I should put forward to the rest of the house. So thank you again, everyone, once again, for being here. So moving on uh, quickly, uh, and to answer the question, why, I mean, our CEO has laid out the you know, background of you know, uh, African Music Library and why we're here. So, but to answer the question of why is the African Music Library necessary now? You know, why now? Why not uh, in the next five years? Let's welcome the COO of Just Play, Mr. Jidofo Okoro. Yeah, um, thanks everyone and um, welcome here once again. Um, I'm very excited actually because, you know, whenever we talk about, you know, um, African Music Library, I can't help myself, you know, um, you know looking at the, the, the future that it holds for the industry and the essence of it all. Um, I'm very, very delighted to that we're also you know, sharing this this uh, work with the general public today. So yeah, why not now? You know, I, I think the most important the most important question is should be um, why not now and not not why now? You know, because looking at it, I would rather you know um, take it from what we have lost. You know, all these years, centuries of history lost. You know, like we saw in the video. Um, the whole between the, between the 19th century and, and the 20th century and 21st century, there is no proper documentation. All we, all we have currently is um, just fragments of, of data, you know, in different um, data silos and uh, platforms. So yeah, that alone shows us a, um, a, huge, a huge deficit in our history. You know, there is a lot of contention still about um you know the origin of, of certain certain types of music like jazz you know the only the only record we have of jazz originating from africa you know is the record of of a certain benjamin who who was wise enough to to not just write about his experience but he also um, made sketches of the instruments that he saw um slaves from africa you know playing in a um in a in a in a central space somewhere in the US. So that is the only record that, that you know, uh, tracks jazz, in the, the beautiful music of jazz back to Africa. So this is kind of, of history that we have lost. So today, so many, so many other styles of music are still, uh, the history is still missing. So apart from history, we've lost money. You know, we've lost a lot of money in this industry. Um, just to give you a hint, uh, the, the last year, last year only, the, the global music industry recorded about $23 billion. And, you know, from Africa, we recorded just 1.2% of that. You know, just, you can, you can see the deficit, you know, so you can see the gap between what the world is doing and what Africa is doing. And the most important reason why we are losing this money, amongst other reasons, is lack of metadata. You know, there is no data to 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 you know claim all these monies you know it's good enough that the, the music is traveling as far you know as everyone can can you know attest that our music is is, is traveling as as far as possible right now but the problem still remains 
how do we match up the data and the music? So there is that huge data deficit, you know, in the system. So there is no other time than to start now, you know, I believe. So I, there is a lot of reasons I can state for, for why we should, you know, have even started, you know, long before now. But you know, if you also look at it, the, 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 the dynamics, the dynamism of, of, the, of the industry is growing every day. There is a lot to catch up with. Collaborations are happening. Um, um, instrumentation techniques are changing every other time. Uh, uh, genres are, are spinning off to other genres. Who is capturing all these things? So this is a lot of data to be captured. And to be honest, we are already late. We are already late. So I think you know what we are doing right now is, is something that should have happened you know centuries back. But thank God we started. Um, AML is, is starting this journey, just like it's every typical library, AML is starting this journey with uh, over 11 million, 11 million data points, you know, um, um, data on over 3,000 artists. So I think... That's up there, we lost uh, Jide there. Yes. Hello, Jide. Okay. I think we lost Judy there. Um, hopefully, Judy will come back. Um, okay, Judy. Hello, Judy. Can you hear us? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, you can. Mm. Uh, yeah, you can wrap up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what I said. Um, this is the right time, you know, to actually stimulate the industry, you know, with the right, uh, with effective data alliance. Other other crimes are already doing this, you know forming huge alliance to make sure that you know data is well circulated across databases um, um utilization is is, is is skilled and you know i think this is the right time and you know also stimulate knowledgeable interpretation of the african music because that's something we've lost already and um i think yeah um there's no other time that to start than now so thanks thank you very much jay for letting us know how important it is for the African Music Library project to start now. According to today, I mean, we could have started said, just like uh, we talk about planting trees, you know, the best time to have started this was probably, in the case of African music, was probably 200 years ago. So I think the next best time is today. So thank you, Judy, for, for making that case. So moving on, uh, now that we've heard from two uh, principal officers of just play. We're going to shift gears a bit and bring on uh, and listen to a panel of industry professionals for a brief chat about the state of African music uh, data. Meanwhile, before I go ahead, I still want to draw our attention to the uh, chat channel. If you have any questions, please send your questions to that channel. I can see one or two, and we're going to come back to take some of those questions uh, later. So for now, I want to invite the head of Capasso. Mr. Jotam Matariro. Hello, Jotam. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Thank you very much uh, for your presence here today. Uh, we, we are appreciative of that. So quickly, I just wanted to um, uh, I have a question for you. Uh, my question is, you know, in what ways does the absence of credible music metadata impact the primary work of Capasso. For those of us who do not know, Capasso is a digital licensing rights agency based in Jobox, South Africa. So my question to you, Mr. Jotam, is in what ways does the absence of credible music metadata impact the primary work of Capasso today? Or do we have you know, enough credible data? OK, um, thank you so much. Um, so. Uh, with regards to metadata, I cannot overemphasize what uh, Emmanuel and Gide have already mentioned ever. Uh, it is critically important that we have the metadata uh, because historically we all know that um, publishers would, would rather on record levels to provide the list of CDs that they would have printed or cassettes and all that, but with the advent of digital, uh, record labels only license for the recording side of the music, 
which means the other side of your music, um, copyright and license for, which is the publishing side. And uh, what it means is that while the recording side had created this metadata all along because they were the ones providing the information, the publishing side never really looked at creating this mm -hmm. data. And what it means is that there was a need to really start from scratch, but starting from scratch in a very fast environment. And what that meant is that there's going to be a lot of speed in as far as collecting that data is concerned. And as a result, most creators have tended to leave out um, the publishing revenues on the digital platforms uncollected not because they don't want the money, but because they don't understand exactly how to do it. And I'm grateful for what those play is doing because the issue of metadata is the main reason why it becomes so difficult to identify the way. You can go and get a license. Most CMOs on the continent have licenses with YouTube uh, for over 15 years now, but we will only be able to collect the videos. The YouTube will only give us what remains after everyone else is collected. And um, what we do now as capacity is that we collect the metadata uh, from the members and then we use that metadata to claim. And we claim every quarter so that composers and copyright owners can be paid on a quarterly basis based on the usage of their music. And we also know that sometimes with music, as soon as you release it, it becomes a big hit but suddenly it goes down. And so what it means is that if you don't collect, while it is still a big hit, the chances of you maximizing your revenue out of it is next to me. So what needs to be done is that uh, if there are any musicians that are listening right now, the most important thing is that when you are recording the music in the studio, you need to record and fill in the speeches agree on all the splits. There's no requirement to have a special, but it makes it makes it very easy in the event of a conflict. And then uh, you use that inscription to submit to your CMO or to whoever who is collecting on your behalf um, on on digital platforms. That is the information that we then use to populate your data into our system. And I'm sure that is what those players will also be doing. They will need that information in order to populate that information on the database. And then everyone can have that data ready. And it will make it much easier for us to collect. You heard that as Africa, we collected just 1%. After as Africa, we collected 1%. I can tell you now from the statistics that we work on, in Africa, we are collecting less than 50% of the revenue that is being uh, for music that is being exploited on YouTube. Because uh, if you look at YouTube, it's mostly African music because we would like to dance to the uh, videos that we put on there. And we can dance best to our own music. And as a result, it is our music which is there. And you need to have um, get your music on the platform officially, firstly, through formal aggregators that have got agreement with DSP, and then any music that is then put there by your friend like myself who would have been dancing to, for example, if I dance to see music and then I put it on there, it should be able to be traced to the original sound that would have been put in by the aggregator. If you just put your music on there into your channel without even aggregating that music, you won't be able to get things because the metadata is not linked to the original sound. So metadata is critical. Without the metadata, you will never be able to end your public again from the digital platforms. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jota, for that detailed explanation of the impact of uh, metadata on, our, on, on your work at, uh, at Capasso. And I can assure the rest of us that as it is with Capasso, so it is with other collecting societies you know, across different, different countries in Nigeria. So, I mean, in Africa, sorry. So this is a very, very uh, critical issue, the issue of you know, credible and accurate uh, metadata. So thank you very much, Mr. Jotan, once again for that uh, uh, expose. 
Uh, before I go on, I want to briefly um, appreciate the presence of uh, Mr. Ed Kiazo, a historian, archivist, and filmmaker here. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, for those of us who don't know, just search for that name, Ed Kiazo, on uh, Twitter. You, he tweets about a lot of African music and African history and culture. Thank you very much for joining us. And um, next up, I would like to invite um, from, from Kenya, uh, DJ and culture journalist Shishi Wenge, if you're here. Uh, Shishi, if you're here, say hello. Okay. Uh, yeah, Shishi, if that person muted. Okay, yeah. Shishi, please unmute yourself. Uh, we still can't hear you. Oh, we can't hear you. Yeah, we still can't hear you, Shishi. Okay, oh, all right. Shishi. Yeah, Shishi, signal is already done. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. We'll come back to Shishi. Um, okay, so moving on to Derek. Uh, Derek Muller. Uh, Derek Muller is also a music publicist and journalist from Kenya. Derek, are you here? I know I saw you in the chat. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, so, Derek, I uh, would like to know, you know, as a music publicist and journalist, uh, do you have any examples? Can you give us, share with us any examples of, you know, the glaring effects of the absence of, you know, proper documentation of African music that you have, you know, personally noticed or experienced? Hello. Hello, Derek. Can you hear me? Hello, Derek. I think we're having problems here, Derek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're having problems. Derek, Maybe can you hear me? Next one, uh, can you repeat the question? Okay, okay. Can you hear me better now? Uh, in network issue. Yeah. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So I was asking yes. if you could talk about the effects of the absence of proper documentation of African music that you have noticed or experienced you know, in your work as a music publicist and music journalist. Yeah, okay. can you repeat the question it's like you have Sorry, can you hear me? Issues, sir. I think we're having some network challenges. Yes. There. There is, oh, yes, I can hear you now. Okay, okay. Uh, let's try this one more time. All right, let's try this one more time. Derek, so I'm saying, you know, can you share with us, you know, any noticeable effects, you know, of the absence of uh, proper documentation of African music, you know, that you have, you know, noted or experienced in your work as a journalist and a music publicist? What's the effect of okay. lack of proper documentation of African music? I think uh, one of the things I'll say is uh, when we lack proper data, there's no we can, you know, talk about, for example, like I have an artist that I really, really want to talk about. Out. Or probably he has been in the industry for like about two years or maybe three years. You find most of them uh, don't have enough information or like blogs don't really talk about that particular artist. So at times when you're doing a story, it's really hard for you to like come up with the exact, uh, let me say exact uh, storyline for that artist because there's no data that really shows that this artist has like probably, uh, let me say, how can I say, like this artist doesn't have like the right information or enough information for you to talk about him. Sometimes you might end up uh, getting a lot of challenges for you to like talk about this artist. As much as he has been in the, in the industry, you end up finding out that this particular artist doesn't have, like you don't have the right full information because that is the first thing that we like African really, really lack because if we don't have that, there's no I'm going to talk about an artist. There's no I'm going to talk about what this artist is all about as much as he has been in the, in the industry. For example, like there was a time I was working with this uh, non-artist. He has been in the industry for like about five years. Huh? But 
when I wanted to like talk about him or do a write up and I did some research on him, like I lacked most of the information about him. Asking him, he told me he's been in the industry for about five years. But then there was not enough data like to you know, enough data for this uh, from this particular artist you get. So those are the some of the challenges we as publicists face because we lack proper we lack enough data, we lack adequate data to mm -hmm. like uh how can I say uh you see when you wanna talk about something. And uh can you guys hear me? Yes, we can yes we can yes we can hear yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so for example, right now, like if I have an artist I want to talk about, and then probably I need to like dig deep about this particular artist, and I really, really do want to write a full story about this particular artist. But then the challenge that we normally face as publicists, you find that this artist doesn't have enough information for you to like do up a writer. So even though if you research or do the research about this particular artist, you you may not find most of this information. Understand? So we lack that enough information. For, for most of these artists, or maybe if there's a brand that you, you want to work up with, if there's, there's something you really want to talk about, there's like no enough information. And if we talk about the music, uh, the African Music Library coming, it's, I feel like that's the best initiative uh, because at least us as publicists will be able to like go there, research the information, find out about this particular artist, and now from there we can now know what we're going to write about. You understand? So I feel like some of the challenges us as publicists we face is lack of enough information, lack of enough data about this uh, artist we're working with. You understand? So if we have something like the way uh, uh, the African Music Library is coming up with, that is something to make our work easier because now we'll have a place where we know that if you want certain information about a certain particular African artist, it's easy for us to just go there and just search the particular artist and we get all the information about this artists because some of us really suffer we can't get enough information because most of these artists don't have the information like the right information so you end up like facing lots and lots of challenges here and there thank you very much derek for bringing home that point i mean it's obvious uh you can only do uh what anything with something i mean you can't do anything with nothing like in mathematics, you know, anything times zero is zero. So yeah. if there's if data is not available, there's really little magic yeah. any PR or journalist can do about you know any artist or, yeah. or you know African music topic. Thank you very much, Derek, for 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 that brilliant hey. contribution. Okay, so moving yeah, on. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I want to welcome um, Kolakpo or Ladakpo. Is Kolakpo here? Say hello. If you're here, Kolapo. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, I see Kolapo. Hello, everybody. Welcome, Kolapo. Kolapo is a music marketing executive from Nigeria, and we are happy to have you here, Kolapo. Uh, so, Kolapo, I wanted to ask you, you know, I mean, uh, we've been talking about uh, lack of proper documentation of African music. So, why should industry stakeholders care? You know, we have heard from, you know, people at Just Play, uh, why should you, as a music industry uh, uh, practitioner yourself, executive yourself, why do you think uh, the industry stakeholders, you know, whether it be artists, whether it be executives like yourself, whether it be labels, why should they care about having a better documentation of African music? Um, hello, everybody, and uh, thanks for being here. I didn't know the there was going to be this many people, but it's fine. <laughs> that means everybody is interested in the future and the growth of African music. So that's encouraging. Um, basically asking why stakeholders and, um, you know, key players in the industry should care about um, data is like asking, should your bank verify the data of your, you know, whoever you're sending money to before they pay the person? The answer is, you know, yes, because uh, at the end of the day, um, whether you're in music or you're in fashion or you're in film, um, what you're doing is buying and selling. You are communicating the product and the quicker you can communicate that product to the end consumer, the faster you get paid. And the same, uh, these same rules apply to music at the end of the day. Um, and 
when I would like to go back to the history of uh, something that started from fiction into real life, which is lasers. Lasers were uh, invented in the 60s, uh, and the goal for the laser is they used to make a lot of movies back then where, you know, the aliens would come and there would be a death ray, and the death ray was like the ultimate weapon uh, in movies then. So you see movies like Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, coming into play uh, and you see that there's a lot of lasers uh, being used in those movies from the lightsabers to the Death Star itself and you see how um, something that came from fiction right so the idea of the laser was uh, our Hughes wanted to create something uh, that was realistic and then it looked like CGI and one of his um, scientists in his uh, labs created it uh, something that you know the U.S. military has been trying to create, like a laser hot enough to you know burn something with the energy of the sun, and someone with a fifty thousand dollar budget in Hollywood created it just as a movie prop. But if you look at how lasers have gone from even its relationship with music, with the compact discs, the vinyls, uh, basically now the internet. Uh, the reason why we are using four G, five G, three G is because of lasers, because the idea of a laser is once you point it at the location, it moves at the speed of what light. And in any market, whoever can transmit uh, or you know execute business and make it accessible at the speed of light wins, the fastest wins uh, at the end of the day. So when it comes to music, uh, you can see how it is useful in terms of verification, first of all, of ownership, uh, crediting, which has become a uh, a big issue in um, world music and you know uh, quite recently in our own uh, Nigerian music industry now uh, where people are like oh I worked on this song or I did this and uh, I did that and you know it's not easily verifiable uh, because you know there's no intentional data and intention again will be my next point as to why this particular product itself stands out because anybody can you know create, you know, and say I'm doing a database of this or a database of that. But you look at the intention, uh, when the founder, I forget his name, uh, sorry, uh, the CEO, I think, was speaking, uh, not GDL4, uh, he mentioned that this is a seed, uh, that he's planting a seed. And I, that statement stuck with me in the fact that if you do something with the intention of making money right with no intention of actually solving a problem per se uh it's a fizzle out at the end of the day but i like the intention behind this because it has so many possibilities just like the laser it started as a movie prop and now we have obviously launching 5g uh, i think next month or this month at the end of the day from somebody just trying to do uh, movie lights at the end of the day. And that is really uh, the prospect of having data now. Uh, 20 years ago, we were talking about buying data bundles. Uh, data is king, you know, people say a lot of things is king, content is king. Uh, but at the end of the day, what, what are we really selling? Whether it's the GPS, whether it's our time we spend on our social media, even our time that we spend listening to music is still data, it's algorithms. We, didn't, we weren't talking about algorithms 15 years ago in Nigeria. I don't even think anybody was, you know, looking, maybe Pythagoras theorem was the closest we got to, you know, mentioning something like an algorithm. But at the end of the day, look at us today, everybody, we have people straight out of, you know, secondary school, not a professor with long grades. <clears throat> basically explaining what the Instagram algorithm and understanding it and even moving with the dynamics. So it shows you how projects like this can open the human mind faster to solve problems better. You have, you know, seven year olds on TikTok now who would handle your social media page better than you because they understand what the system wants and they feel with the system. And it's that instant gratification that businesses themselves uh, can also see by joining these platforms as well. So, you know, uh, there's, there's, uh, please do let me know when I'm out of time. I don't want to just keep rambling and rambling. Yeah, you can wrap up. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you, you're making a good point. Yeah, you can wrap up. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, basically, um, I see the use. Um, 
top of practical uses of this being uh, getting people paid in time. It's a verification system. It's like the mastercard of music where you just run it through the system and because the system has its own data bank that is rich, uh, it instantly verifies and rewards instantly. So uh, the future of this can even go as far as inf uh, influencing government policies because government will now start talking about, okay, now we have this data, we can plan for the future. Investor relations will also improve because data speaks for you when you're not in the room, right? It's easy to do all this uh, presentation and show the investors this and that. But that research they do when you're not in the room and much, you know, muscle can be around that data is what really, you know, convinces them at the end of the day. And it not only boosts the ecosystem, even beyond companies like Just Play, uh, it goes beyond, uh, it goes even beyond the company to reward, you know, you can see in the future companies like Wikipedia working with Just Play to, you know, work with uh, music crediting data on the Wikipedia page, for instance, or, you know, Google working with them and TikTok, and not even in the far future, in the very near future. So um, I think stakeholders should care, and, you know, these are my reasons why they should care. Thank you very much, Kolako, for that uh, elaborate explanation of why you think the stakeholders in the music business industry in Africa today should care about proper documentation of the music. I mean, there's nothing to add. I mean, you literally, you know, went through every single key point from, you know, ownership to how it will even impact uh, payments and, you know, other businesses. Thank you very much, Kolako. Um, is Shishi available now? Shishi, can you say hello? Uh, yes, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, Shishi, I can hear you loud and clear. Happy to have you back. Um, apologies. No Apologies problems. for that slight mishap. Yeah. No problems. Yeah. So Shishi, uh, basically as mm -hmm. a culture journalist, you know, I just wanted mm -hmm. to ask, you know, in what ways have, you know, the absence of credible metadata uh, impacted your work, you know, in working with, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when you're working around African music and African culture as a whole. So how has the absence of credible metadata for African music impacted your work? Um, the absence of credible metadata definitely as a journalist has affected, um, for example, when talking to producers, for example, and they're trying to... So in Kenya, for example, we get a lot of flack for not having a specific sound and that we borrow sounds from many places. And when we try to go back to like the root of what our sound is and what tribes they come from and what instruments we used, um, there'd be producers who genuinely want to connect to such sources but didn't know how to get to those sources. So libraries like this that are going to be created would be so beneficial in that. And it's been um, good to see uh, producers and musicians who are trying to connect to their roots uh, make trying their best to wait i saw a comment that someone can't hear me can you hear me okay okay um yes so for example it's been good to see the musicians and producers and instrumentalists you see um finding ways to connect with uh those roots for example, um, there's a project I worked on around 2019 about Benga, and um, the story was being told by foreigners, but then they came to us as, as journalists to find out what we can do as Africans to find out where Benga came from, what has inspired it uh, from the past into the future, um, present moment and into the future. So being able to find out, I think the most important thing is um, being able to find out where the roots of these uh, sounds come from, where they perhaps meshed with other sounds to create a whole other sound, because a lot gets lost in translation, um, especially because we've, for the longest time, we've not been able to tell our own stories or archive our own data and you know such things. So I think it's important for us to be able to do it like for Africans by Africans. And yeah, just to keep the, the chain connected so everyone can know where everything is coming from. Thank you very much, uh, Shishi, for that brief explanation. I mean, it's clear if you don't know, uh, you can't trace the chain of events, then you know, 
someone else might claim that they are the originator of a genre that they didn't uh, <laughs> originate in the first place exactly. and all that. And that's why we need accurate uh, uh, information in order to ha- yeah. tell our stories clearly. Thank you very much. And with that, we come to the end of this short panel session. And I, again, I want to thank every uh, special guest of ours that has contributed to these que- uh, questions and answered our questions. Thank you very much. Uh, so moving on, uh, before we call on our CEO to walk us through uh, the AML site, AML is African Music Library, in case you don't know, it's a short form for AML. Uh, AML is short form of uh, African Music Library. Um, I want to take a couple of questions from the uh, chats uh, area here. Uh, so the first question is, I think it's by Living Green. Uh, I think that was the first question that came in. It says, what is a music library and why do we need one? I like it because it's a very, <laughs> it's like going back to the foundation. What is this about? So yeah, I'm going to invite Emmanuel, our CEO, uh, to answer that for us. So what is a music library? Why does Africa need one? Because when he says we, I believe we are talking about Africa because that's the name of the project, yes. Uh- all right, thank you, Levin. I think uh, my next uh, presentation would answer the question uh, of uh, what a music library is. Uh, but in summary, a music library is a repository where you go and you find music, you find who made the music, how music, the music was made, the instruments used, and every other artifact you know, that uh, went into making that music. So um, it's, 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 it's like your normal uh, library where you go to find books, uh, but this time you find just more than the book. Um, you find the metadata around the book and uh, every other information that can help you to understand that book. And um, um, I think that can just uh, segue into my uh, next uh, presentation. Um, I don't know, can, can you guys see my screen? Not yet. Oh, really? Not yet. Oh, sorry. I'm error of course sharing my screen. Yeah, so, um, and the way uh, the, uh, our music library is structured is um, it, it's centered around search, being able to find whatever you want very quickly. And, um, the, uh, and in addition to that, Resources are grouped also. We, we, we cover resources uh, such, from, such as record labels, instruments, artists. You can look at an artist and um, you uh, drill down their discography, look at the tracks, and also find analysis of those tracks. You know, and There are also uh, documentations around genres. You can compare genres and see why genres are different, or uh, uh, how they are similar. You know, we also track uh, information about bands, uh, books and journals as well. Uh, and then it, 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 uh, we're going to also be adding blogs and podcasts and documentaries as we as we go ahead. And you know, um, also there's a part of the library which is building the community, and uh, that we have a, a whole lot of um, a community of volunteers who help you know in uh, annotating data, explaining data, writing stuff, or uh, just contributing knowledge generally. Mm-hmm. So. Um, it's it, the li- library is basically uh, it splits into uh, two issues, if you if you may wish, uh, which is one is metadata, the hardcore metadata, data about who did what, where and when, and then there's also knowledge about how you know this uh, 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 stuff was done. So um, I'll, I'll take us into the library. Uh, let's see uh, how it looks. Um, in a second. All right, so um, I'll go ahead and share the library. All right, so this is this is the, uh, the African Music Library as it looks today. Um, and so the most important thing for us here is that you're able to search and get um, anything you want very quickly. So when you, you know, search, you, you can come up, uh, you know, both artists, releases, tracks, and, you know, genres, if they uh, are available, 
Um, there is also, uh, you know, short cost to resources from the top from a navigation bar here. You can look at artists, bands, genres, and instruments. And, um, you know, uh, you can also decide to reach out to us if you're a record label and you want us to, you know, carry some of your, um, you want to include your works in the library or you're a music expert, you want to contribute knowledge or uh, you're a researcher or you just want to volunteer. And, but if, or if you have other, you know, reasons to talk to us, um, you know, you're also welcome to use our contact us to reach out to us. As of today, uh, we're looking at 11.4 million data points that has been gathered on 3,265 artists and 100 genres. Um, you know, we have uh, here uh, a quick uh, snippet of the artists that, you know, are currently on the library. This is just a random selection of six of them. Each time you see the library, you get a random selection of six artists to look at. Also, uh, bands, this is just a, a random selection of four of the bands that uh, we currently, um, you know, have in the system. And one other important thing here is that we have, we do have uh, genres, you know, documentations around genres. I know genres have been one um, uh, area of contention around African music recently, and a lot of questions have been coming on. What's the difference between Afrobeat and Afrobeat? What's the difference between Juju and Apala? What's the difference between Makosa and Mapoka? You know, um, those uh, uh, knowledge we are gathering, um, and then we uh, are also putting them out. So to, to demonstrate, uh, you know, uh, we can look at an artist, for instance, and, and say, let's let's look at Sakodi, for instance, uh, from uh, Ghana, and see, you know, how an artist page presents. So this is the presentation for an artist page. You quickly can get um, quick metadata about the artist and also a quick bio. But also you can get, uh, for some of the artists, you can get a full biography that details their life and everything you need to know about them, including sources that we use in this biography. Um, uh, I know uh, our, uh, our Q people are going to talk to us also mm -hmm. later about you know, uh, the details of how we get all this data. So you can also find uh, genres that have been, we are machine learning processes have detected in the works of this artist. And um, you can also find their discography. Uh, so we can take a discography and look at the discography. Um, oh, one thing I didn't show uh, here is that we, we also have uh, records of the record labels that this artist has worked with. So you know you can uh, click on any of the art rec um, record labels. And uh, we are populating you know, um, this at the moment. Uh, history of the record label, the, you know, uh, the awards they've won, the artists that they, you know, they, they've worked with and all that. So, but if you look at um, a release, for instance, you can quickly see, you know, uh, short um, uh, descriptive metadata about that, um, at, about the release. And, um, you know, but one important thing is that we have also published the audio analysis of, um, of this uh, release. Uh, and this here, I'm looking at the track uh, "Rollies and Cigars" uh, from, uh, from from that release, and um, the, uh, you you can you see you know the participants in this track who participated in making this track. We can tell that you can tell that Michael Addo was a songwriter, you know, uh, K Soul was the producer, and all that. And we have uh, this. Uh, we, we we know we we haven't covered everybody. And so we have outlets where you can, you know, reach out to us in case you think, okay, I participated in this track and, you know, my name is not listed and you can reach out to us and then we'll go, we'll go through our verification process and you get listed. But um, one important thing for us also that we're publishing with this library is, is the audio signal analysis. This is a product of, uh, you know, machine learning models have looked at this track and said, you know, how can you use this track um, as a DJ or as an application developer? How can you use this uh, track? Um, or maybe you're just researching or doing, um, do your research or you want to write stuff. Um, as a DJ, you know, the camera key becomes very important as well. You know, when can you, if you want to use this track in a playlist, when can you sequence it? Where can you and where and when? Or what should follow? Or what should it come after? The camera key tracks that. You have the cut key, the BPM. It tells you, you know, the, the, the singing voice and the confidence our, our, our models have, you know, in this. But if you really want to see more data, there's a lot more data that 
you know you can get um, this uh, in the future we're going to publish APIs uh, so that you can call in um, and get this data you probably could you know uh, use this data to build your own search engine you know or uh, build your own playlisting algorithms and all that so you don't have to start from scratch just like we have done so um, the one other important part that you know, I want to demonstrate today is the analysis we have on our genres. Um, we do have uh, analysis on genres, and the, uh, the, the presentation you know, tells you the summary of the genre, gives you history uh, as written from our own perspective, as a, from uh, you know, the actual custodians of these genres. Um, how, what, what has influenced it, and what has it influenced? You know, you can, uh, for, for music, Musicologists, you can find information about the, the, the forms and style, the elements of, of, of this genre, what makes this genre stand apart. And then um, uh, soon we're going to be adding key instruments that make this genre stand apart as well. But also, importantly, you can get you know, the key artists in this genre that you can listen to to understand what the genre is, so you don't uh, mix up. And uh, but, you know, some of them would have uh, explainer videos to demonstrate this genre. For instance, this is um, uh, an explainer video uh, that you know can tell you how Afrobeat is made. It's uh, by Newman Afrobeat. It's featured some Kuti, where I think this is the class where he was trying to you know um, teach them how to make Afro um, um, uh, uh, Afrobeat. Um, well, my volume is low. You can't really hear this, but you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So this this video exemplifies how you make, you know, Afrobeat. What are the basic components, the music, uh, the instruments, and how all the rhythms are layered. But uh, what other key uh, uh, component here is that you can compare genres. For instance, uh, let let's say we want to compare, you know, the difference between Afrobeat and, and Fuji, for instance. You can you can compare genres and see how are their musical elements the same or different, you know, uh, what makes them uh, different from each other. And um, yeah, um, and finally, you, if we are, you know, hoping that we can build collaborations after this uh, meeting, after this uh, um, webinar, we're going to be reaching out to build more collaborations to enrich this. Uh, we want to add musical scores, jo uh, books, journals, researches. Uh, and documentaries about African music so that you have a one-stop shop where you come and uh, you can get everything, metadata as well as um, uh, as music, depending on, on, on your need. And so if you have any suggestions on um, how we can collaborate or how we can improve this going forward, um, and like I said, this is just version one, it's the seed, and we will all together as Africans and music uh, stakeholders in Africa contribute our effort to grow it to what it becomes, um, whatever we want it to, to become in the future. Thank you, so uh, I'll take a question. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for that uh, walkthrough, the EML platform. Um, it's a beautiful one. Uh, and as you have mentioned, as you have hinted, you know, we look forward to more collaborations to improve the data. This is going to be a collective work. It's not just uh, the EML team working on it. No, we need everybody. Um, uh, Mr. Ed Kiazo was just talking about in the chat uh, channel about you know, how he had you know, worked on something like this earlier. And we're definitely going to be reaching out to you, Mr. Ed, and every other person we can to work together to develop a very robust, comprehensive database. So thank you again, Emmanuel. Before I let you go, uh, there's quite a few questions in the chat channel, but uh, other members of the team are engaging with them. I just wanted to ask this one, uh, uh, Emmanuel. Someone asked, is the library accessible via API call? Oh yes. Um, so right now we we, we do have API uh, in, the, in the development uh, which we are using on the library. But uh, in version one point two of the library, we are going to publish those APIs so you can also call in from your applications and use the same data we use. So we do have APIs, but they are not public as of today. But I expect them to come in future iterations. Great. So yes, to the person who asked that question. Definitely API calls are coming in. They are not here in this version one, but in version, version 1.2 and subsequent versions, uh, you'll be able to make API calls and get uh, the data that you want. 
Thank you once again, Emmanuel. And um, quickly, we're going to invite our head of QA, uh, Anu Onasoya, to talk to us about the quality assurance process on AML. You know, how do we ensure that, you know, we say our goal, as I mentioned earlier, was not just to get a comprehensive data, but accurate data. So how do we ensure that you know, the data we get is going to be accurate. Uh, anu, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Emeka. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, that's a bit, um, <laughs> some people might not be in the afternoon. So good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, everyone, as it comes, cuts across wherever you are, anywhere in the globe. I want to especially welcome everyone once again to this fantastic um, launch of the African Music Library. It's, um, I know that's been quite a number of other projects that come on maybe in the past or anticipation and all that. But um, the African Music Library um, is not just um, a, a place to just gather music, gather information. I want to start with a quote. Before I start, please let me share my screen so that I can share my presentation with the house. Okay. So I want to start with a quote from William Willie A. Foster. And the quote says that quality is never an accident. It's always a result of our intention. It's always a sincere effort. Quality also, it's also an intelligent direction and a skillful execution. So much more than um, being of, of we just gathering information together, there's a quality assurance process that comes in place to ensure that every information that we put out there on the African Music Library is authentic, is valid, and is up to date. Very important so that um, information that are verified are put out there and can be used by anyone anywhere in the world, reaching out to the African Music Library to verify an information about whether a, um, a track, a single, a journal, a write-up about a particular genre, about a particular um, history of an African genre or African music. So every information we put out there, it's there's a deliberate effort. There's no, anything we are doing here, there's no accidental, gathering of information and just putting it out there for us. So one of the things we do in quality assurance process, riding on, on the words of, of um, Willie A. Foster that says that quality is never an accident. One of the things we do is that we have a structure, a quality assurance structure, which is divided into two basic process. And that process includes our data gathering process and our and our data analysis. I'll start with the data gathering process. In our data gathering process, because for example, for every library in the world, whether it's a physical library, a digital library, a research is usually done and books are being gathered, but now we are talking about music. A research is usually being done, information is being gathered, books are being gathered, uh, music, um, journals, academic research, reviews, instruments, genres, so many things are being gathered together. So we do an extensive research when we are gathering this information for the African Music Library. We do an extensive, and this is usually carried out by researchers, academia, anthropologists, musicologists. So we, we take, we give an attention to details as we get how we research for the information we want to put out there on the library. So we do an extensive research. We collate this data together by sourcing from recording companies, publishers, um, various certified database, whether CMOs and global libraries. So we gather this information. After gathering this information, they are segmented under different um, under different sections. So if we gather information about genres, 
So we segment also to say, okay, which genre are we talking about? Which particular region in Africa is it, is it uh, common to? What are the music? What are the sounds that, um, that identify this particular genre? So we do an extensive research. And then after doing this research and collating our information, a very important thing we do is that we do our data review. And the heart of this data review is fact checking. We want to ensure that there are no um, false information on the African music like that. I remember Jotan was saying something earlier on as we got um, being able to verify, being able to say that this person actually owns these particular works. So we do fact checking and we do that through calls and emails by our HR officers. We do that. We reach out to stakeholders in the music, in the African music industry. We reach out to participants, like for example, songwriters, we reach out to creators, we reach out to even the artists, the managers, the publishers, the music publishers, to confirm this information that we have researched extensively, we've collated, we've segmented, we've, we've sorted. It's just like saying that you have a an A stack with so many things, and then we've sorted, we've gathered in information in silos as they're supposed to be representing on the website and then we fact check very important we confirm oh are this information correct um before we put them out there sometimes we call sometimes we send email sometimes it's via meetings or uh, we invite for a meeting and we have conversations and then there are ongoing conversations with different um, stakeholders in the music industry and at this point i would like to appeal on behalf of african music library that we are open to collaborations to, with all the stakeholders in african music across africa and across the globe because we know that some African artists are being managed by uh, maybe record labels or managers that are not Africans or they are not resident in Africa. So we are very open to collaboration across the globe as we reach out to you to help us confirm information before we put them out on the African Music Library for everyone to be able to access. So we are open, our doors are open, just as Emmanuel showed on our website. You can go to our website and um, send us a message, and then we'll take it up from there. So I'll also quickly talk about the, the data analysis part of our um, quality assurance process. There's a very key program that we currently run in-house right now is the genre study program. Here we do detailed qualitative analysis of individual African music genres and styles of music. If we if we realize that in the recent time you've seen that um, there have been maybe more maybe not recently, but there have been a lot of sampling now of of music. I know um, we have someone sample maybe an hip hop artist sample um, Fuji in his um, track. We have people maybe sample um, um, Sukos in, or, or let's say Ana, Amapiano in, in um, Afrobeats, that's Afrobeats with S. So we do detailed qualitative analysis of individual genres, styles of music, even music themselves, to be able to understand and extract the core composition of the African music out there. So doing this, we have a team of ethnomorphic, ethnomusicologists that come around. We have music producers, sound engineers, researchers, academia that assist in help us in this detailed analysis that we do. And I must say that at this point, our doors are open to other music experts who would like to be part of um, our genre study program for African music. Our doors are open, whether as an expert or whether as a participant in the study program, our doors are open. We are inviting people to join us as we give more identity to African mm -hmm. music and the style of uh, an African music style. So what, part of the things we, we do with this, when we do elemental analysis of this genre study is that our machine learning team, they create models. They create models with our data, the data that we've been able to get from our genre study. They'll create... Um, models like for example the gender model to be able to identify which gender is singing a particular african song or be able to be able to say what kind of instrument 
is in this particular um in this uh you say what kind of instrument was used in this particular maybe single or track or album so we've been able to develop models is part of our phase one we've been able to develop models that can do that based on the elemental analysis that the qa processes <coughs> have been handling <coughs> in the setup of the african music like <coughs> so i must say that also that um as our ceo said earlier on that later on this will be made available for other um <coughs> music companies to be able to access these models to be able to use on the long run. The okay, so as a round of my mm -hmm. um, quick run through of the quality assurance process that goes on at the back end for the music library, for the African music library, another thing I need to mention is metadata. Uh, the basic units of information as regards every music. From the ideation of every track, to the eventual release or the addition of every single EP or album to the eventual release, a lot of um, things go on, a lot of um, activities go on, and a lot of stakeholders come in together, come together to actually make that ideation become a reality. And part of those things we do at the African Music <coughs> Library is to gather information as regards metadata. So yeah. part of the things we gather under this metadata, the basic unit of information is that we gather the artist's name, the bio data, the discography, that's the works of the artist, mm -hmm. the feature, the featured artists, whether the collaborations that have been done. We also gather information about the record label, the participants that were involved in whether the songwriter, the instrumentalist, the album art design, we gather all those information so that we, the library, every time you come around and click a particular, maybe album, a particular release, whether it's a single, you can get information about every stakeholder, everyone that was part of that process. And at this point, we would like to appeal um, to music industry experts. Please, we would like to appeal for you to join hands with us uh, in the African Music Library. We would like to work hand in hand with you as we <clears throat> gather this data, as we verify this data, and as we put it out there so that the African music can have an identity, can have a say. So when um, rights, um, when rights, when information needs to be, um, people need to be paid for their works, whether um, um, commissions, everyone that has been part of the process can be properly identified and given what is due to them for their intellectual property. So we want to finally, as a roundup, I want to use these words to appeal again to everyone to say, please, we are calling on music industry experts uh, music stakeholders, CMOs, publishers, that please would like to work with you to help us get this information. Let's work hand in hand to ensure the African Music Library becomes a success, whether for this generation or the generation to come. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Anu, for that uh, detailed breakdown of uh, QA process. And um, Yes, so you have heard it, you know, how we, the lengths we go to to verify the information that we have and the information that we get. And uh, you also heard Anu's passionate appeal to, you know, industry stakeholders. Uh, we are going to be going out full time, you know, to reach out to you. And when we reach out to you, please um, avail us your, um, your time and help us out. Thank you again, Anu. So now we've come to the end of the event, but before we go, I'm going to invite the CEO again to give his closing remarks. Emmanuel. All right. So thank you very much, everyone uh, who has joined us today from <coughs> everywhere you are. Uh, for those who were able to share their opinion, thank you very much. For those who ask questions, for those who are not unable to share your opinion today, uh, uh, they, we are open. Uh, you can find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. 
Uh, you can always reach out to us on the website as well. Uh, tweet at us, uh, send us an email with your thoughts, uh, <laughs> questions, and then uh, we'll come back to you uh, as, as fast as we can. So like we said, this is, this is the beginning. Um, you know, uh, I want to be able to look back in five years, in 10 years, and, uh, you know, see uh, that this project has really uh, become a foundational uh, a keystone for, for, for music in Africa. African musicians, uh, we, we make a lot of good, great music, and it's complex, and it needs to be understood and perfectly used to match whoever this music was intended for. The situation where, you know, revenue we get from music, usually at its peak, uh, shortly after the release and promotion, it's not acceptable, you know, because primarily music is an emotional appeal. You know, we, we, we listen to music to, to feel emotional needs. Mm -hmm. And those needs, emotional needs, you know, even though they can vary during our lifetime, they don't vary that often. And so music continues to, you know, embody that uh, uh, solution as an emotional, uh, uh, you know, uh, appeal to us. So uh, we want to be able to match every african music with those you know that mm -hmm. you know are they are intended for and those that the listeners that can you know derive those emotional needs mm -hmm. from them and then the artist must be paid so for us music is ageless music is timeless mm -hmm. and the creators of this work need to be paid mm -hmm. and um and paid as fast as possible as quickly as possible so i invite you once again uh, let's all let us all join our hands and uh, uh, make this a success thank you once again for for being with us and uh, enjoy the rest of your day thank you very much everyone um, have a great day bye all right all right all right guys Thanks. thank you everyone thank you thank you Oh. <laughs> 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 He's ejecting them one by one. He's ejecting everybody one by one.